I studied fashion design, studied in Lyft Bangalore and um, when I graduated, by the time I graduated I was clear that I'm not going to work or do a job in the corporate industry, that much was clear. So I went to Auroville and I worked there at Upasana Design Studio for two years with Uma and I think that was very inspiring for me because that sort of... Uh, made me confident that something like this is doable and you can do something. So since 2012 I've been doing this. Little away from the Pondicherry beach of South India, Opasna conscious clothing brand lies in the greens of Auroville. Upasana is a place where sustainable fashion, responsible design, wisdom of Indian culture, social business and spiritual progress get woven together seamlessly. We use organic cotton, healing textile, khadi and best of India's handloom. Shorts here I found it at Jungle Dance Sunday flea market and um, the tops I found them at second hand stores in Ibiza when I was traveling and this one uh, I found it in a landfill close to Garden of Dreams when I was going around and I had it customized it was long and now it's a shorts yeah so for me it's really important that um, we do ethical choices when making clothes and choosing second hand is a big part of it. So mainly I work with uh, three fabric stories right now. My passion is to work with actually um, authentic Indian traditional textiles that people have been doing for long. But uh, to interpret it for modern, for contemporary generations, no, for like us, that we can still use because it has a lot of value in terms of <clears throat> they're environmental friendly, they give back a lot to the society, they're based on community empowerment and stuff. So, um, one range of textiles, which is my printed textiles, I work with a group of artisans in a village about 60 kilometers from, uh, um, from Jaipur. So we work with uh, mud resist printing, where we print with mud first on the blocks and then we natural dye it. So that gives a very nice fine texture, that's one. The other one is I work with um, organic cotton which is grown with local seeds, non-genetically modified, from a small town called Farid Kot in Punjab. It's very close to the border with Pakistan. There there's a group of village where there are farmers who grow this organic cotton.
I natural dye it in Gujarat in Kutch, and then I convert it into jackets here. Then there is a third story that in all of this there was uh, I wanted to involve the local women. Um, that's a cause which is very close to my heart that I always like to work with women at grassroots. I think it's probably also because of the place that I come from. Okay, I will now show you um, how it looks on black fabric. So this one says Ferrari. So since I'm do doing upcycling, <laughs> I like to sometimes play with status symbols or capitalistic stuff. So I'm just gonna write, I don't want a Ferrari. Or I don't need Ferrari. <laughs> always into vintage clothes also when I was a teenager it's pretty common in Germany to go to flea markets on Sundays or even uh, with my mom we attended some local fairs um, but then I guess it surged again when I was living in Berlin and vintage became a big thing um, to try out new styles and yeah then uh, after my graduation um, some years back three years ago I just moved to Fuerteventura which is a remote island in Spain and I started a business of selling vintage clothes and I just had a lot of them that they did not sell because they were not so spectacular. They just had a nice cut but not a nice print. So I researched, okay, what can I do? And then I came up with, okay, I can paint these things and I started painting them and supposedly my clients preferred those clothes to the other ones. And then I just kept going and started working with artists and now I don't even sell vintage anymore and just created my own style and even already had my first art show, Upcycled Urban, uh, back in March in Germany. <laughs> so here the basic uh, skill that they had was to actually do this running stitch, what we, they make these uh, upcycled blankets at home that we use to sleep on, they're called gutris. That's a skill that almost every woman has in India, anywhere in the country. So here as well that was happening. And these women then, um, they upcycle my waste material along with some industrial uh, denim waste uh, to make big portions of fabrics that I later convert into garments. <laughs> ரெண்ட <laughs> Fast color of the get to say, upper patu, Ulla Nagarik Dago of the Bangle. A Nesavana, Yolo, either Kimala, wherever, Wora decay, under decay, Muna decay, Nala, Samandre. Red to Boka Sandra Color, she captured black, Lugula Rose, Sella Gutta, Yes, for me, it's um, an art because I like to paint things and but I would say that there's a general color composition that you should follow if we talk about the three complementary colors, yellow, blue, and red. So I try to think more or less like, do I have a bright or a dark piece? Because my color mostly matches on very bright like white or very dark like black. So if it's black, I can work with bleach, for example, and um, colors like silver and white. And then if it's white, it's more flexible. But since my style is a bit more like, um, punk I would say. <laughs> I work with some dark um, grunge elements like you can see here the dark stars and moon and then I match it with some fluorescent red. Yes. And usually the composition comes um, in the moment of creation 
unless I have a commission or a project. Like sometimes I work with DJs and artists and use their name. And if it's like a name that has maybe a fairy tale character, there's also there has been a moment that I drew a mermaid or something or a Mickey Mouse. So all of that is possible, but usually um, my art is not so planned beforehand. It arises in the moment. This one also I made it just when I was like at the beach in Mandram and I painted outside and I usually have some stencils I bring. This is this is the printing that I was talking about that I do in Rajasthan. So this is hand block printed with mud and then it's uh, dyed in a natural process with waste iron ore actually. That's what brings out this color with pomegranate leaves. This is once so something like this or even these ones. Yeah, but then I make like very, um, what you call, contemporary wear that anybody can wear in today's time. So this is another one of Laura Liberty's outfits. So basically the shorts, I found it at a clothing swap event back in my hometown in South Germany, Bavaria. I think it's work. Hi friends from there. And um, then the top is also from a friend from the vintage scene there. And basically she invited me to come to her pop-up vintage store back in August last year. And I just did a live painting. And I came up with this floral design and just wrote love on the shirt because I was feeling some love in that moment. It's also done with natural dyes and uh, natural indigo and tomato. What you can see is a patchwork dress design made out of two old trousers. One that I had already painted last season and worn it too much so I didn't like it anymore. And another one that was too small so I brought it to the tellers along with a sample. And they made this cute uh, embroidery dress out of it, which is partly painted and partly patchwork. The textile from Punjab. So this is the Kali. It's natural dyed in Gujarat. And then this kind of work, this is what the local girls and local women are doing. So this is how we add, basically, value to our stuff. Yeah, the thread is also hand spun. Uh, it's organic cotton, which is hand spun thread and uh, woven also by hand and natural dyed also with hand. So it's entirely handmade. So yeah, this is what I mostly actually make and this is what people generally associate fire with. What, what? My name is Govindu. Which is going to come on the like on top which says not cheap fashion because it's so important to distinguish for so many party goers they come and they want everything for cheap In general, fashion industries, I mean, we're living in times of Instagram and online and everybody's just scrolling and everything is available to everybody. So all the big brands are now actually launching new styles every week. It's insane the amount of uh, change that people want. So you buy something and then you already wear it twice and then you throw it away or uh, and then you want to buy something new. So that's how it goes. Besides that, even the big high street uh, fashion brands, they produce a lot of stock. And earlier what they used to do is that um, 
because they would not want to sell their stuff cheap. It was a branding practice. So they would produce a lot of stock and whatever was left and was waste would be burnt. So that was another, apart from any way the pollution that uh, clothing industry causes. So a lot of consumption basically. And then you have cheap stuff. Like, because people want to consume and everybody wants to wear something for 200 rupees, 300 rupees because they want to change. I mean, I think what we do not realize is that when you're buying something cheap, somebody is paying for it. It's just that it's not the customer. So the story of basically laborers who work in clothing factories is the worst. In Tirupur, which is the production hub for India, no? like all the t-shirts and denims are produced, there is suicide rate of one worker committing suicide every day. I think this was, I checked it last, was two years ago. Uh, for denim industry, it's like um, in China, basically all these factories literally have nets which are surrounding the buildings because the tailors were jumping off committing suicides because all these laborers were stitching in these sweatshops. They are bound, like because they're the demand and pressure of fashion industry is so high that these people are made to work 20 20 hours 18 hours regularly for months and you know their pay is held back because you want to retain so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that goes on so somebody is paying i mean because it's like it's common sense if you're wearing a t-shirt how do you think that you can actually get a t-shirt which is stitched which is knitted which has fiber in it for 200 rupees, I mean, it just can't. So somebody has to pay for it. It's pretty much like mining industry as well. Usually I have uh, some paintings that I do on the beach. I bring clothes that I find to the beach and paint there. I'm currently producing my next collection of recycled sari shorts and jackets. One and a half, three hours. So it will take three hours just for these two outlines, more or less. And then we will this I don't know. This will take a lot of time, maybe two, three days. We'll see because then the stitching, all this will be filled and it'll be filled very finely like close together. And here on the edges, we always have to pay a little bit more attention for the finesse to come. So yeah, so I also don't know with each piece, basically, you know, I kind of note down how much time it's taking and then you add that to the cost. Well, last season it was life-changing because I did attend uh, an ocean cleanup and um, it was the first sari I found on the beach side and I'm like, wow, this fabric is so beautiful, why not turn it into something beautiful? And it was a kimono because I wanted my collection to be unisex, so I guess this uh, twist in my brain, it happened in a rumble only. But with indigo, so I have a set line of kimono jackets which are made with organic cotton natural dye in this deep blue and then each piece we make some uh, we make a big hand embroidered kind of art on it so now we have our eight jackets so we have to do each jacket will be a different design so we sit and we do it so once it's finished then it'll be ready to shoot and launch and everything. Ah, you okay. have to hold it careful Okay. 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 Elsa, you can go to Ibn and give him this shirt. Ah, Jao, or just to follow me, ask me to let you ask me. Do you, the Jao, this is your first look? I'm Rojan and uh, I'm here to do the catwalk and this is my first time but I did photo shoots twice. I'm really excited about this and let's see how it goes. No, this is actually my second time. Earlier I did it with the traditional wear, Maharashtrian. Uh, 
class. Then there are two groups. There's women and then there's men. There's no particular reason, just for convenience sake. Uh, so, Agni, Katya. So yours is number two. You have to remember our sequences. That is like the important thing, yeah? Because all your garments are also labeled with that number. So we'll know. It's easier. So Agni, Katya, Zoshan. Agni, Zoshan is four. Yeah. So I have two or three? For now you have three. Let's hope Katya comes. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's the thing. So Katya is number one. So you're number two. Katya is number three. Zoshan is number four. Then there is Sneha, number 5. Okay, so this is what we have for women. This is it. I think it's gone. Okay. See, I will show you separately. I think. Okay. Okay, let's go. Come. I hope you It's all there already. Move. And from there as well. And when you come, and here as well, in this area, also you pause. And when you come down here, you basically take a round in front of people, like show yourself off, and then come and this is where, and the chairs are for the men. Like because the first set of women, when once everybody is here, then you all stay here. And once the, and then the boys would have started by that time, right? So once the first boy comes here, then you will slowly start to come out so that when you leave then the boys will be here and they would be hanging there for a while because then this group will again come back do the whole round and then join in. and we have the chairs and everything so you can be pretty casual just that you'll be wearing our clothes you can hang and be on the table this time be in theater like if you feel like stopping somewhere stop look walk slow don't rush and don't talk to each other or anybody. Just look at other people. What if you're confused? Just see where is the other person. You know the route overall, so just go further where you have to go. And remember to pause and slowly. That's it. Sorry, where did uh, Jackie start? Inside, no. Uh, so we come back here. So yeah. So that yeah. once the first, all the girls are here now. Once the first guy comes, the girls can slowly start moving one here. by one. Yeah, yeah one like by just one. When you stand in a line, when you arrive, stand in a line, and once the first guy, you see him coming, from one girl can start going. The guys will stay there, except for Ajay. Okay, so you can, you don't need to stop. Actually, you can come maybe for some time. Come, and all the girls once they will come, they put on the second dress and then walk out again. Do the same and do the same whole round and come back here. And then you just chill and just finish. Yeah, and then we finish. Yes. Yes, I'm not nervous at all. Oh. Yes. 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 Once we walk out, the rain. Yes. Kante, this is a first time for you, or you did this? Yes. First time. I don't want you to be pinched. Hey, Kante, this is your first time, or just you did before? I did before. So you are excited to do this? Yeah, I can't wait. This is a great time. In the locker, man. Great fashion. Great to serve. Hey, what? What's that? What's that? The hero's vanity. Actually, I want to find a man. I'm glad to be coming. Yeah? So beautiful. This is your first time or what? No, I'm very professional. It's first time. <laughs> How do you feel? Strange, uh, but uh, enjoyable. Yes, she told you it's fine. Yeah, now I understand. 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 Now I understand.
from Haryana and what I grew up around, I just wanted to get away. So, and I think uh, because I was um, I was a girl, but I was smart academically, and I was better than all the boys in the family. So I was allowed, like you know, that exception was made. Kya chahti ke we will not get her married, but she can actually go and study because she's smart. So that was it. And then when I wanted to um, in my twenties after graduation. Uh, when I wanted to do my own thing and I was going on into a direction of leading a life which was not your mainstream that okay you have a job and you're getting married and stuff. There was a lot of resistance for sure. Um, it was on and off. Like it wasn't like people were like thrilled that okay now we support you and you do that. But my mother did. So it is my mother that actually kind of just stood by me and she's like oh, and whatever she could do, she did. Um, and then after a point, uh, my father was never against it, but he wasn't like necessarily very supportive. But then later on, he also came on board. So and after a point, anyway, by the time I was in my mid twenties and stuff, they just kind of knew that there's no way that I'm going to change my path, right? So then they accepted. You can use double sided tape. Let's have a look. We should have a little bit of 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 a little bit uh, it has got a diverse textile heritage. Uh, each uh, state of India uh, is well versed with different kinds of textiles like uh, Tamil Nadu, Kanchipuram, Madurai cottons. Uh, different uh, textiles come from different states. Uh, Goa also should have its own textile. Today I am wearing a Kunbi Sari. It is a native of Goa, purely hand woven with pure cotton yarns. Kunbi communities used to wear these Kunbi Saris uh, in olden times. They are very hard working people and they used to work in their paddy fields wearing these saris. These saris used to be of smaller width uh, so that they can wear uh, just above the ankle. We started making or weaving at the college on a hand looms. We basically had two hand looms. Uh, we wanted to experiment with different designs, different color palettes. Each and every part of India has to have its unique textile which it has to be retained, preserved and conserved by the textile enthusiasts. Then only the textile tradition will remain alive. Yeah, so um, last season it was all pretty organic. Uh, I had a collaboration with a DJ from Kazakhstan, Aida. And uh, she introduced me to some other fashion people in Morgem, which then introduced me to the organizers of the market at uh, River Resort last season. And I did some live painting there. And through the live painting, um, especially girls my age, they were very impressed and uh, volunteered to be live models. So we did a nice shooting of a friend um, at Pirata Pizzeria or also at Dragonfly last season. And this season I even got approached uh, by a model from outside of Goa. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Now you should go there actually with the audience. Go now. It was very nice. And it made by Asta. You enjoyed? Yes, I in fully enjoyed. I have to give Asta flower to say thank you. This is the guy who has stitched yes. all your clothes. Wow. And these are my girls. Where is the other girl? Come first. We are going to be here. Today we were there. That's a good one. And uh, <laughs> by the way, these are the girls who have done every all the hand stitching possible. So they are the artists. And this girl here, Elsa, she's the one who makes every like basically everything possible. <laughs> <laughs> Super homemade.